You were invoking his name? I didn't invoke any name. They put that on me. The spirit, the spirit laid that over on my track. They said I was Krishna Venter. Krishna Venter died in Box Canyon in 1949. And they put that cult over on me. That was a cult that was in Box Canyon in 1949 when I was in reform school. 20 years before I even grew up. They put that guy on me and said that I called myself and I stood up on the cross and I did that. I didn't do all that. That wasn't me. I ran with a bottle named Jesus. He spelled his name Jesus. He was Panamanian. He did. We called him Zero. And uh, they said that, I, that that was me because they hooked it on me and said, oh, we're looking for Jesus. The cops made a joke about it. We're looking for Jesus. And they said, uh, are you Jesus? I said, no, my name is Manson. They said, oh, that's what we thought. Manson, son of man, you're him. I said, him. And then they made a joke out of it, you know. Then when they put me in for arson, for burning up them tractors out there and trying to put the water back on the ground, <coughs> they... Uh, they come back on me like uh, I had been calling myself Jesus or something, you know. And that's where it comes from? Yeah, that's how I got stuck with it. What year is that? Uh, 1968, 69. Oh, so it's pretty late in the game already. No, no, not late in the game in, in the essence of uh, looking in forever because your courtrooms have convicted me for being Jesus Christ in one courtroom. Well, and then, you're con then in the other courtroom, you convicted me for being a devil. Now, if you believe in your own courtrooms, you convicted me for being the father of this country. <laughs> you convicted me for being the motivating force behind your children. And some of them God I only know. God forbid. Yeah, and I only know, I only knew Linda Kasabian. I've seen her three times in my life, maybe two minutes in my whole life I've seen the broad. She came up to the ranch for about a week and she said, hey, my name is Linda. I said, oh, Linda. She said, can I stay here? I said, can you stay here? She said, I'd like to live at the ranch. I said, I'd like to live at the ranch. She said, well, can I stay here? I said, can I fuck you? She says, yeah. And I put my hand up her dress and I said, yeah, okay, you can stay around. That's the biggest thought in my head is getting at her body. I wasn't thinking about sending her down to be no troops about saving nothing or stopping nothing. Don't you remember the song I wrote about garbage dump? That's it. Oh, garbage dump, my garbage dump. You can feed the world with my garbage dump. Garbage dump, my garbage dump. That sums it up in one big lump. Market basket, A and P. I don't care if the box boy stares at me. I don't even care who wins the war. I'll be in them cans behind my favorite store. Oh, garbage dump. I'm a hobo, man. I'm a hobo. I just fell out of the penitentiary. I hadn't been out of jail long enough to do anything. I had a motorcycle, a guitar, and a sleeping bag, and a bunch of broads following me around talking about how I was Jesus. And when these people broke their words, when they broke their words, they said, they said, the master, I'm talking about Melcher. When he broke his word, he didn't do what he said he was going to do. When, when, when uh, Lino Barianca got stabbed all up and all that gold and all that stuff was laying all around, the little black phone book from New York hit list was gone. That came off the top of another penitentiary in Leavenworth, Kansas. They come off the top of that poker game over there in Nevada, over where the divorce courts are running down through Denver and all that. In other words, there's a lot more to this road than you see. See? Well, you know, where I come from, the guys with guts, they do it themselves. Come on, man. They don't, they why, don't why you got to have, why, why you feel the need, why you feel the need to get down on me? Is that going to make you look any bigger? What if I just jumped on you and beat that dog shit out of you? Would that make you feel any bigger? You would have to have you? three friends. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're a dreamer. <laughs> yeah, you're a dreamer. Don't yeah. try it, so. Huh? Don't try it. But that doesn't prove anything, does it? Well, I don't know. Does it? I don't know. It proves nah, you know. not much. Yeah. Not much, I guess. No. Well, neither did you prove the Second World War. <laughs> I mean, you may have won the war, but you didn't prove that it was right or wrong. See? Right or wrong, history turns it. History wheels it. I agree. Now, if you thought, if I was guilty of something, and after all the pressure they put on me, and they put that medication on me, and all the doctors, and drug me up down the hallway, and done everything they could do to kill me, I've had this whole country down on me trying to murder me for all kinds of different, everything they don't understand, what they don't know, what they can't realize, every little insecurity they got, here they come, bringing it to me. Digging, I got to carry it on my back. Do you think I would still be here if I was guilty of anything? And look well, me in the eye. Look me, look me straight away in the eye. Do I look like I'm guilty about anything? You look more guilty than <laughs> anyone I ever looked at uh, really? in my life. Really? Yeah. Oh, really. boy, that mirror's going to be heavy for you to carry in. <laughs> Charlie, one of the things that you should never do, let me give you a little media advice to say, look at me and ask if you're guilty. See, we're talking personalities here. <laughs> but see? you are the guiltiest. Yeah, there. we're talking personality. Yeah. You're going to say I'm guilty. You don't even know me. Well, you're a convict. You've never even walked You're a convict. You're a lifer. You should have been dead. 
dead. I should have been dead. Most people say it's unfortunate I'm that you're not. I'm convicted and I should have been dead. Yeah. Mm. There's nine dead people out there. There's a lot more than nine, son. A whole lot, and there's going to be a lot more. You want to make your confession now? Confession for what? What do the you others, want me to confess? The to? others. How many more than nine? How many more than nine are there? Well, I think Tank got his blown, brains blown out for lying, didn't he? A couple snitches, they got found burnt to death over there in, uh, in Sacramento in the trunk of that car. I think uh, there's a whole road of people that's dead out there because they, they're out of balance. They're not in line. Because they crossed Charlie Mann. No, no, no. I don't, I don't pass out rules. I don't dispensate life and death. That's God's job. You suggest it. No, I don't suggest anything. You say take care of business. No, no. I live in the truth with mine. If somebody else comes up and lies on theirs and they're snitching to that cop and they're writing notes and they get busted and they get some throat cut, hey, what can I say? They say, you made it happen. I didn't make nothing happen, man. I can only be responsible for one human being. My own self. I'm responsible for this guy. And everybody in the so-called Manson family that you guys gave me after I got busted, which there was no such thing as a Manson family, it was a musical group called Family Jam. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, you have to write. So story. everybody else in the if Manson you want to believe what, what If you want to believe what Ed Saunders said in New York and wrote and never even met anybody, and he wrote on the note uh, to calling the, the, the lawyer down there, the lawyer was feeding him information out the underneath and breaking all the laws and get sending him the transcript so he could write a book like he knew all everything and everybody, you know. What do you think of Vincent nothing. Fugliosi? Huh? What do you think of Vincent Fugliosi? Fugliosi is a machine. He's a well-programmed machine. And he made himself a big lot of money. You don't realize how much money he made. You'd be very jealous if you knew how rich that guy was. What do you was. think of him in substance, though? In substance, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's mother's perfect child. What do you mean by that? Well, he's done his lessons real good. He's, he knows all the books real good. He's right down to the last little, little decimal. In order to talk to him, you would have to, you would have to make it so... Com I couldn't talk to that dude because I'd have to make it so complicated. What do you think of Sharon Tate's mom attending all of your parole hearings? Well, Sharon Tate's Dallas? mom has never attended my parole hearings, and she knows I didn't have anything to do with killing her, her that's husband. Is that right? That's not right, is it, Paul? No, she goes to Tex. Who's the one? Tex that, took responsibility for that, man. And you read his book? He said he did that. He said he did it because he thought that's what I wanted him to do. I never told him to do anything. I told him, do what you know is right. Like I would tell any human being, do what you know is right. Do what you feel is right inside of you. Okay, I'll be Tex, you be Charlie, okay? I want to go uh, kill those people that live up on that hill. No, it wasn't like that. What is this? He, what said, what? he said, he came to town. Here's a yokel coming in Hollywood. He got a pocket full of money and a pickup truck. He got in with them fast girls and they took everything he had. And he's running around in a pickup truck. I look over the edge of my game and I see that pickup truck. I want that pickup truck. He said, I want to join. Can I come and live up here with you people? And I said, can you come up here and live with us? And he said, yeah. I said, can I have your pickup truck? And he said, yeah. So he gave me the pickup truck. So I felt responsible for him. So I let him clean the barn out. I let him do little funky jobs around, see? He's in a matriarch. I'm in a patriarch. There's a difference. I'm walking on one road. He's walking on another. And he's looking. And he's seeing what I'm doing. And he's gaining strength inside of himself. He's re resurrecting, resurrecting his own thoughts and his mind to be into a patriarch. Mm -hmm. So he comes up to me and says, well, I, this guy beat me for my money. What should I do? I said, whatever you feel is right. Should I go get it back? I said, if you're big enough, go get it back. If not, sit down and forget it. He said, what would you do? I said, what is it? He said, $5,000. I said, well, it might be big enough to go get it. If you're big enough, go get it, go get it. So he went down and beat some broad for the money. The broad had beat him for his money. He just got his faith back, went back and beat the broad for her money. Then he comes to me, he runs and hides. They call me and say, where's my money, son? I said, man, I, you know, I got that. I go, check, check that to my door, man. Go down there and face it. Oh, they'll kill me, they'll kill me. And he ran, left me to face his responsibilities. You dig? So I take a gun, I have to go down and I have to get nasty with people, dig? I have to put it in line. I have to say, look, man, I don't know nothing about no money. We'll, we'll burn that ranch down and kill everybody else. No, not my friends, you won't. You dig? I said, I'll, you know, we went through a lot of changes, so I ended up shooting that dude. You dig? You kill him? No. No. I I don't know much about guns. I'm not a very... I'm, I'm serious. I'm not okay. a, You know, I don't know anything about... I've been in jail all my life. I don't have guns. I'm no, fighting no. a knife if I'm going to fight. Okay. Uh, so, uh... Uh... 
Then when he come back around, he owed me one. 